Why does your head always look bigger than mine? Because I'm twice the man. Is that how it works? That's how it works in my mm. world. I don't think that's the reason. But... <sighs> Yikes. Sorry, guys. Welcome to the Video Game Losers Show, episode 25. Wow. If you can believe it. Not quite half a year's worth of shows. We've been on for 16 but... years. <laughs> but, you know, it's still <laughs> awesome. Uh, we're still here. We haven't been canceled yet. Uh, that's good. We got some pull with the network, though, so that kind of keeps us around. But still. Yeah, it helps when we're in charge. <laughs> That show well, the editor doing terrible. And the senior well, editor. well, it's doing terrible, but it's got some charm. <laughs> this is, this it's is got the some lowest charm. rated show on the pop culture network, but the editor in chief and the senior editor uh, host the show. So, yeah, I guess it stays. We did a focus group that says, "Up yours, we're keeping the show." That's what it actually said. Oh, there was a clipboard. That's what it actually said. I got the memo, so, and we're putting it on prime time. Oh, nice. We're hey, we're gonna do it. Earlier in the evening, five nights a week, Leno style. Because if he could pull it off, then obviously we could pull it off. Well, I mean, I'm no Leno, but I'll do my best. <laughs> but, but you do have a big head. Leno has a big chin, so there's your connection. Hmm. Hmm. All right, guys. What do you say we talk about some video game news? Do it. You think we should? All right. Uh, First up, what the world needs is another Android device. How about one dedicated to gaming? How about an Android device dedicated to gaming with a touchscreen in a Vita shell? Now, how much would you pay? The new Droid X360 features a 5-inch capacitive screen. It is running Ice Cream Sandwich, which is 4.0. Uh, it has 8 gigabytes of internal memory. It's got an HDMI out port, and it runs 9 different emulators ranging from Nintendo 64 to the original PlayStation, all the uh, Sega, Genesis, you know, uh, Nintendo 8-bit, Super Nintendo, all that classic stuff. Nine of them on there which you can play. And then, of course, everything that is uh, Android, you can get on there as well. How much would you pay? Is that like a legit Vita? thing? Or is that somebody just... That is a, well, it's a legit Chinese device that you can order <laughs> online. How so... much would you pay for a Vita-looking device... Running Android that could play nine different emulators. Probably the same I would pay for a Vita, I would guess. Really? It's only a hundred and thirty-nine dollars and free shipping. Hmm. It's actually, yeah. I mean, it's a five-inch screen, so it's smaller than you know your average tablet device, or whatever. But for having the two joysticks, the gamepad, and the buttons, it's actually a pretty nice gaming machine. Yeah, if it works. Well, are you gonna? I mean, it looks well, like it's a sketchy site to begin with, and are you going it, it to... It is a somewhat sketchy device, uh, but it does, you know, appear to work. The only question is going to be, you know, whether or not if you have problems with, like, dead pixels on the screen or the touchscreen has dead areas, you know, where are you going to send it to get it serviced? But, um, you know, overall, it's, as far as watching the videos that they've included with it, it's very responsive. It's a 1.5 gigahertz processor. Uh, it's got 512 megs of RAM. Um, you're only looking at 800 by 480 resolution, which isn't great, um, but, you know, as far as, like, cheap Android devices go, especially on a 5-inch screen, that's pretty good. Um, and, yeah, and all your, you know, it uses the actual Google Store, so you can get the Play Store, you can get all the good games that are on there instead of being stuck with something like the Slide Me Marketplace or Get Jar or one of those type of knockoff, uh, Android spots. But, I mean, right now we're watching on this video, uh, some guy's playing uh, Mario 64, and uh, it's running really well on that device. I don't know, man. Something's, <laughs> something's kind of sketchy. It, it's, it's not licensed by anybody. It's not licensed by Sony for using the PlayStation shell. Uh, none of the emulators are licensed. Uh, all the ROMs you're downloading to play on it will be extremely illegal. Uh, but, you know, hey, who, who cares, right? Who cares? Does it come preloaded with the ROMs? Um, no, I believe it just comes preloaded with the emulators. Oh, well, they got some, you know, morals. They wouldn't give you the games. <laughs> Dual camera, a front .3 megapixel, and a rear 2.0 megapixel. That's like a decent, that's like an Evo, no? That's like half an Evo. Um, but it can do 1080p that's video. That's basic smartphone. It, it can run uh, MKV files. Uh, for all you anime fans out there, uh, you know, it can do ebooks. It can do Indonesian and Dutch languages. If you want to switch it over to that, that's, that's kind of important. That's kind of hot on there. Um, but, you know, a lot of times when these things come out, they're not giving you the full 
Android experience, so all the Google stuff is locked out, and this one actually has it open. So that's pretty cool. Hmm. I don't know, man. 130 bucks. 139. It's or 140 bucks. So yeah, it's a good price. If it was like, I would have to see it and test it out and play it and be like, okay, here you go, man. I, but it. it you take a chance? Are you gonna take a chance for 140 dollars? I'm not. I might. I might when Christmas time rolls around. I got some extra cash. Right now, I ain't got no cash. Who's got extra cash? Around Christmas time. My mommy gives me money for Christmas. Tell them that's what you want for Christmas. You Maybe this, I will. You want this illegal gaming system. <laughs> I want the Droid X360. Alright. Nintendo 3DS. We got uh, more sales numbers. They have now sold over 19 million units. Just a few. Of the Nintendo 3DS. And some of you may go, 19 million. Is that a lot? Is that not a lot? It doesn't sound that high. Um, you know, the Wii has sold 95 or 96.56 million units, so that's much higher. Uh, the Nintendo DS is 152 million units. So those all seem really high, so 19 million doesn't seem that great. However, the GameCube only had 21.74 million units. So if you think, you know, 21.74 versus 19 million for the 3DS, and the 3DS is still fairly early in the hardware life cycle. Um, it's still got some years ahead. Isn't that of scary that they sold 152 million DSs? Like, it means everybody's got one. The DS is the uh, most prolific uh, hardware of all time. Beats the PlayStation 2. Now, PlayStation 2, I think, is like 120 million, somewhere in there. Um, which, I mean, fantastic huge amount, you know. Hmm. But for the 3DS being that failure of a system everyone was you know talking about that price cut sure made a difference and for software they've sold 52.81 million units of software so that's more than two per unit which is the measure that they look at for good adoption especially on a handheld so good for them all right zynga the games company that appears to buy every uh, mobile games platform out there that's not already owned by EA has announced they are lowering their 2012 outlook. Uh, they said that their uh, quarter two, instead of turning a profit, was actually a loss of $22.8 million. How? Part of that is because they bought the um, OMG Pop, the company that made Draw Something. Mm -hmm. So they bought them, so there was a cash flow out in order to acquire that company. So that contributes somewhat to the loss. Um, they've also said that uh, because they launched the new games Bubble Safari and The Ville, which are their new Facebook and uh, Zynga.com games, that also eats up a lot of initial investment that they hope will return, you know, down the line. Um, so, that seems like a lot of money. Like, 22 for million? some dumb platform games that no one cares about, really. You know what I mean? Like, those aren't like... I didn't just buy Final Fantasy franchise and now I'm making a game. You just bought some Facebook game. And you had $22 million in loss? Wow. Well, how much ad money do you think they generate on those games? You know, they don't really make it from the ads. They make it from the in-game transactions. I still so don't. the microtransactions. People buying the, you know, uh, extra power-ups in Bubble Safari or buying the... Uh, Jimmy Buffett sheep in Farmville, or you just know, can't. Whatever. I don't buy it. You don't buy what? That they lost that much money? Yeah, you people, think there's a lot? People spend, or? That, oh yeah, but <laughs> people spend that much money on those games. Like, how many have you have actually bought? You know, we've spent money on Farmville stuff. Wow. Because Philip really got into Farmville for a while, and for his birthday and Christmas, he wanted Farmville cards. So we would go to Walgreens and buy him the Farmville cards, and go home redeem them, and buy a bunch of stuff for his farm. Wow. That's what he wanted. That's what he got. It's a waste. I can't do it. I can't spend money in-game because I'm like, this is a game. There's no way I'm giving it money so I can have something that just looks cooler. Did you ever buy stuff for Diablo 2? No. Really? Yeah. Oh. Really. Wow. I refuse to do it. I was, I'll sit there in front of a computer for 400 hours <laughs> and find it myself. You know, there have been a couple times I've played some of these games the Zynga games, the Ville games, and the whatever, where I've been trying to do something, and it's like, oh, I could do that, you know, if I do this and wait three days, and then do that, and wait a day, and do that, and wait a day, and I'm just like, screw it, I don't care enough, I'll pay the 99 cents. You know, so I've done that before, where I've paid the, 
you know, the less than a dollar on something just to get it done and move on to something else. Wow. Yeah. All right, next up. Skylanders Giants has an official release date now of October 21st. Uh, the uh, sequel to the popular game will feature new giant-sized figures as well as a bunch of new regular-sized figures. Um, but it appears that... Uh, the game releasing on October 21st means that just about the time the Christmas holiday season is over, you should be able to actually walk into a store and buy them if you want to get them, if this at all follows the trend of the first game. I don't know, man. I think... I think the hysteria is over. Yeah, I think it's starting to die a little bit. It's going to be like Guitar Hero where everybody wanted it like crazy and then nobody wanted it. Like, I think what they should have done is released some sort of expansion... You know, with like 20 new characters or something at the beginning of July or the beginning of June. You know, somewhere in there. Uh, I think they've waited too long. It's been almost a year, I think, since the first game came out. So... I mean, they kept adding figures into it, you know, new new guys and stuff. A lot of them, though, they, they released like legendary versions. They released like the translucent plastic versions of them. But it wasn't like you were buying... Uh, I don't like new levels. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they needed an expansion. They they had the four sets um, that added on like the Pirate Cove and the Ice Mountain and whatever. But those were built into the game. Like you knew that those were coming. There was no announcement of a new expansion that unlocks something unseen. Well, have you, you know? like beat the game? Have I personally? I mean, have you seen no. it beat? Or? I mean, people have. Yes, I personally have not. Uh, in fact, last night I for the first time started Assassin's Creed, the first one. That's how. Up to date, I am on my gaming. Yeah. First Assassin's Creed, and you know what? First Assassin's Creed, kind of boring. There's not a whole lot happening at the There's beginning. There's a lot of lost story. There's a lot of like you running around for five minutes, and then twenty minutes of you being told uh, how terrible it was that you ran ahead of somebody, and and then you uh, sword fight guys for a half hour. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Glowing review. Oh, then you take a virtual nap, and you wake up with some scientist staring at you. Good times. All right, next up, Warner Brothers Seattle uh, being hit by layoffs. Uh, Warner Brothers Seattle, which is actually a combination of three individual uh, independent studios brought together under the umbrella of Warner Brothers, uh, is now occurring some sort of layoffs. They are working currently on the Lord of the Rings Guardians of Middle Earth video game, um, but the uh, studios that actually make it up, uh, Surreal Software, Snowblind Studios, and Monolith Productions. Uh, Surreal Software made such games as Lord of the Rings for the uh, PlayStation 2 and PC. Um, the Suffering, if you remember that game. Mm -hmm. um, Snow uh, Snowblind Studios made uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. Great game. Um, Champions of Norath. Uh -huh. Justice League Heroes. Uh, uh, Death Tank on the 360. Don't know. Yeah, no idea on that one. Uh, Monolith, they made Blood. The old PC game, Claw, Rage of Mages, Shogo, Mobile Armor Division. I don't know if you ever played that one. Those that was are all, good. Yeah, those are all um, Septera, Septera Core, Duh. which was a key game. Um, of course, one of my favorite games of all time, Tron 2.0. They made that one. Um, Matrix Online, which uh, made some money, but then kind of fell apart. Uh, Fear, Condemned, Gotham City Imposters. So all... You know, fairly decent games. So probably Fear being their most important. Oh, uh, you mean Tron 2.0? Yes. Yeah, Fear. Tron 2.0, yes. Wow. Yep. So, wow. So hit by layoffs. First it started out as a rumor, and then word started to get out, and then finally Warner Brothers was like, uh, due to shifting business uh, imperatives, we were realigning the studio, which basically means any project that's not Lord of the Rings has been shelved and canceled, and uh, those people have been sacked. 007 Legends has hired a few new voice actors. If you're unfamiliar with 007 Legends, it's the new James Bond game that will take Daniel Craig from the current James Bond movies and put him in a bunch of uh, key storylines from past movies. So some of the Roger Moore movies and the Sean Connery movies, you're going to see uh, Daniel Craig running around in those storylines. Uh, so for all you Bond fans, that's pretty cool. Uh, but the uh, key character here that they have added is Richard Keel, who was Jaws in the James Bond movies. Jaws will be coming back to lend his voice to the game, which is amazing, because if I remember, his only lines in the movie are and and 
And that was, I think, all he said in those. Hmm. But when they do it in the game, it'll be his legit voices. So there okay. you go. Okay, wow. That's exciting. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Because, I mean, how much money do you think they're paying? Probably Taco, and how much Taco Bell and $100. <laughs> But they're spending all this time to let you know oh, if I got that it's grunt, authentic if, voices. If I got grunt three times, that's a pretty good deal. For authentic voices. All right. The Ouya system that we talked about, the Android-based console coming out, uh, is now getting OnLive Gaming. OnLive is the streaming gaming service that plays on your TV, and now they're going to make it so it works with the Ouya console. Um, so the uh, Ouya console will have a whole bunch more games now from the get-go because a lot of the key PC titles are on OnLive. And they've also released the final version of their controller, uh, which basically looks like a 360 controller in an off-brand PlayStation 2 controller shell. Meh. Hmm. Hmm. But it's elongated. Well, that's why I say off-brand. Because it's kind of like the PlayStation 3 boomerang, if you remember that, but angled. Whatever. You're not excited for the Ouya yet? I don't know. I still can't get you excited for it? I may, you know, I don't know. I just don't really care about any of the Android games and anything that's online. There are, like, quick games that don't really keep my attention more than a couple minutes. Well... How so, long do you want a game to keep your attention? For a couple hours. What? I need to spend, I need to spend at least a few weeks on a game. Otherwise, it's a waste of my time. Hmm. If it lasts more than ten minutes, I'm probably not going to complete the game. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's usually how it goes. Uh, Assassin's Creed 3, the new multiplayer trailer, has broken out. If you want to see how you can customize your characters in Assassin's Creed 3, this one's set in the uh, Revolutionary War period. Um, also, if you want to see their uh, Domination and Wolfpack modes, huh? Wolfpack? You want to see how all of that works, you can check out that trailer. That is available online. Also, if you were at Comic-Con in San Diego, you got to play it there. So. Oh. The people at Comic-Con got to play it. Now we get to watch it in an interesting web trailer. Good for us. What does interesting mean? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if you've ever played the game Payday, the heist, it's about a bunch of uh, bank robbers with machine guns, have to go out, heist a bunch of stuff. Murder? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's some murder. Okay. Yeah, you like that. Well, a new uh, expansion coming out for the game sets players in a scenario of being in Mercy Hospital when Left for Dead vam uh, vampire zombie attack breaks out. If you've played Left for Dead, you come across Mercy Hospital and you have to fight a bunch of zombies in there while finding you know storyline information. Well, now this expansion for Payday the Heist, these guys are being sent into the hospital um, from the trailer. It doesn't really make it clear. It sounds like they're trying to actually find Patient Zero before the outbreak occurs, and uh, it doesn't happen, and then they have to fight their way out. Why? Why are the bank robbers doing that? Apparently, they are hired because they're so good at heisting that they have to heist Patient Zero. That's what it looks like. Oh, I could, that's totally doable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can work with that. <laughs> so kind of... Well, okay, it doesn't make sense. But, you know, it could make sense if you didn't really want to think about it. I didn't even know this game existed. Payday Bank Robbery. I'm going to have to... Payday the Heist. You know, I don't think it ever hit retail. I think it's, uh, like, PlayStation Network and PC. Is it... Have you played it? I have not. I played the demo for it. But Is the it demo fun? Was, I mean, it's all right. It's a shoot 'em. I mean, a shoot 'em up game. Well, what do you do if you're robbing a bank? You just shoot everybody? You got to make it to different locations and set charges or steal pin numbers or whatever, and then you got to go cover somebody while they're running out to get some equipment, and then you got to make your escape and all that kind of stuff. Ah, oh, jeez, that sounds complicated. You ever can seen just, the movie Heat? Can I just walk in there and go, "Give me your money," and then they give it to me, and I maybe <laughs> and shoot a guy away. or two, and then mm. I run? Yeah. Mm. Uh, I don't think that'd be as much fun. <sighs> Next up. Uh, the new trailer for Silent Hill Revelation 3D is out. If you want to know what the new Silent Hill movie is going to look like, it's basically going to be like Silent Hill 3 as far as looks. The storyline, of course, looks to be something completely randomly different. Uh, they always mess up the storyline when they do these movies. But it looks exactly like the game. Uh, the uh, actors and actresses in it look fantastic. The set looks fantastic. Uh, the monsters look fantastic. But I'm sure the story sucks, just like the first one. But it's in 3D. So you want to see some 3D, then there you go. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what, hey, 
I know you played some Tide the Tasmanian Tiger. No, I didn't actually. Oh, you had to have played some Tide the Tasmanian Tiger. Actually, I did not. No, I know you did. No. Now you're just lying. No. You're just lying to us. You're trying to cover up the fact you probably had the Look, poster. If you if you said did you play Spot the Seven Up guy or did you play the Noid, you know, avoid the Noid, you know? Yeah, I played those. Did I play Ty? No. Yeah, you did. <laughs> well, anyway, the game's coming back for its tenth anniversary. Uh, this one is going to be. It looks like a mobile game. They're hitting that whole. Um, you know, iOS, Android type marketplace thing, but they're bringing it back 2002 to 2012, the 10th anniversary, tie the Tasmanian Tiger. I mean, listen, how many things does Australia have going for them? I mean, really, how many things does Australia have? They got kangaroos. Right. They got Russell Crowe. Is he Australian? He, uh, may, maybe. Let's, okay. just, let's say for, the, for argument's sake, he is. All right. They got uh, a whole country full of... Uh, Criminals. Is that how it used to be back in the day? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it probably still is. We yeah, got. I mean, I mean, we got. Ever... We got a bunch of criminals here. I just figured everybody did. So, so give them this one. Give them Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. Okay. All right. You get. You get Ty. Yay! Chrome Studios. Ten years. Congratulations. Uh, Final Fantasy Warriors of Light coming to Android. Basically, they've just uh, launched Final Fantasy three on Android. Um, a lot of people love it. A lot of people say it's great. They love Final Fantasy. So now this new uh, Warriors of Light is going to be hitting. Uh, this will be six ninety nine in the Google Play Store. And you have to have at least Android two point one. So what game is it? Um, Hot on the heels of Final Fantasy three launch. The original, the original Final Fantasy Warriors of Light. Like, is it was that game even called Warriors of Light? I thought it was just Final Fantasy. Well, it probably was just called Final Fantasy, but this one's called Final Fantasy Warriors of Light because it's slightly different. Which is based on the PSP remake back in 2007. Okay. Oh, well, that might be worth buying. Did you ever play the original one on the Nintendo? Yeah, it kind of sucked. It I was like, all right. I like the, the ones that followed it, 2 and 3. I mean, U.S. versions, 2 and 3. Um, Which are 6 or, or yeah, 5 and 6? Whatever. But yeah, those 2 especially was my favorite. I really loved 2. And 3 was had a great story. Uh, beyond that... Yeah. See, I was always more into Bard's Tale than Final Fantasy, and then Bard's Tale died a horrible death. I'm, I'm telling you, Final Fantasy two and three were great, and then what comes you mean next? Five and six? Seven, seven was the like, a good one. Seven was the one that made me buy a PlayStation. I, when I was in college, uh, I remember the day everyone was talking about Final Fantasy seven, and we were just like, "Screw it, we're all going to Best Buy." Five of us piled into a car, we all drove out to Best Buy, and all five of us bought PlayStations and Final Fantasy seven that day. And then eight sucked, and then, and then we all went back nine, an hour later to buy weird. memory cards. And then that was the end of Final Fantasy, as far as I see it. <laughs> was nine or ten? Well, I mean, seven was the end of Final Fantasy. For me, two and three is is where all the money's at. Everybody else, eh. hmm. Well, that seems a little rude of you. Well, I'm sorry. That's how I feel, and that's how everybody else should feel. Hmm. All right. If you go to GameStop right now, I know it's your favorite store. If you go to GameStop and you pre-order Transformers The Fall of Cybertron, you will get the Generation 1 skin of Optimus Prime in all his snub nose cab glory. Looks fantastic. You can play him in single player and multiplayer. And this is for US and UK. So all you UK people like Chris Vent and Alan Price and I don't know who else lives in the UK. But I think those guys. But yep. uh, uh, then, hey, uh, you know, and does Canada count as part of the United Kingdom? Because they're still controlled by the Queen, right? Yeah, but we kind of, so they, we, we kind of, they're kind of our stuff. That's weird. Well, anyway. Um, they're, they're like America, but less violent. That's what I hear. Mm. I don't know. And worse teeth. I don't know how that works. Pretty girls, I heard. I don't yeah. know. Finally, Baldur's Gate, the enhanced edition on iOS. Uh, will have cross-platform play along with Android, Mac, and PC. So if you buy the game Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition, uh, it's already out on PC, it's already out on Android, it's already out on Mac. They can all cross-play against each other. The um, iOS version for your iPad will also have cross-play with those. They thought they wouldn't be able to do it because of the uh, crazy shenanigans that Apple pulls, the way Apple closes things off and uh, doesn't like to play well with others. Well, they somehow... Uh, wrote him a check and made it happen, so you're going to get cross-platform play. So congratulations, P 
people who bought an iPad, you get to play a good game with everybody else. First time. Wow. First time. All right, that's going to wrap it up for the news. Oh, um, wow. We're not going to take a commercial break. We're going to go right into your thing, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, we're going to do my thing. Here, I'm going to be really close to do it. <laughs> that was <laughs> creepy. Okay. That, that is so uh, downright woo. awkward. So just, I can't get a good position. So here, I'm just going to do this. Why don't you just put so, the, It's a laptop. This is... Put it in your lap. No. No. Why is that so awkward for you? Don't Don't question my methods. So here's the video game releases for this uh, last week of July, first week of August. It's kind of a split week. Um, you're not going to give very much. Jury duty. <laughs> Jury duty. You're not going to give very many titles because there is not, in fact, many coming out. Here's what we got. Uh, for the PSP, we got a game called, you know what it is, it's Grow Lancer. Another anime style RPG that has several series prior from it. I think it started on the PS2 and, and now it's all the way up. Wait, you're me. saying there have been other anime inspired role playing from games? From this name Grow Lancer. And this title is actually called Wayfarer of Time. So uh, if you've been playing that, and I think it was, I want to say it was like a German titled game. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> it's a good, it's a, it's, a, it's a popular RPG and now you're getting the next edition on the PSP. Uh, up next, we're getting The Political Machine 2012 Woo! for the PC. Now, if you've ever uh, played this game, it's basically you're playing the electoral race to see if you can become the president. And it's a strategy game, and basically you pick a, uh, a cartoon character that you represent, and it's generally, you know, back when it first started, it was Bill Clinton versus uh, was it? Oh, uh, Bob George, George Bush. George Bush. And, uh, oh, from that one? Yeah, it started oh. way... I mean, this is like the third... From 93, third, 94. Yeah, this is the third installation of the game. So, basically, you get like a generic... 92, 91, 92. You're going to get a generic Obama, and there's a female character, which... Hillary? You know, who, who knows who that's really going to be. And then, I guess it would be the other guy. Romney? Don't say it. So, <laughs> them, you get to pretend you're oh, those guys, it? and you basically uh, have to go it. to the different states and try to win their electoral votes. It's a fun game. I liked the first one years ago. It was kind of fun. Can you scandal the other person? Can you like pay somebody? Yeah, to you can do all kinds of weird, like try to. You play dirty or nice, and you just kind of gotta win every little electoral state. And then mm. if you at the very end of the election, whoever wins wins. It's kind of fun. Did you about the electoral college? That's uh, important. Not really. Uh, up next for the 3DS, we're getting the Kingdom Hearts 3D Dream Drop Distance. Yay! It's got Tron levels. It's got Tron levels. Yay! I'll have to own it at some point. So you know, obviously the. Uh, not King, right Kingdom now, Hearts has it, but... been kind of less popular these days, so hopefully this will bring it back. What? It, it was good on the PS2, and then all of a sudden it kind of disappeared. It went a few titles on the DS, and now it's been dead for a while. And now here we go, Kingdom Hearts 3D. Bring it back. I, I, I hate how they're doing that thing where it's like, when it was on Super Nintendo, everything had Super in the title. And then when it was on 64, everything had 64. And then because of GameCube, that kind of dropped. Mm -hmm. But then with the handhelds... It's like with DS, they kind of just, whatever, DS. Paint a picture, DS, whatever. And now for the 3DS, instead of putting 3DS, they put a 3D title. So Kingdom Hearts 3D Dream Drop Distance. Because that makes sense. Dream Drop Distance. I'm wondering how far the drops of my dreams can fall. It's the Dream Drop Distance. The 3D. Okay, so, I'm the so only you one. just ruined somebody's. I'm vision. the only one. You just ruined somebody's vision of their video game. So I'm that's the nice. only guy. Uh, up next, we do have the sequel to Orcs Must Die, which is Orcs Must Die Two. Does it have new levels? And oh, it has new levels, All new right. stages. Uh, if you guys have played Orcs Must Die, it is like a, uh, it's kind of like a dungeon master game, but it's like set in first person, so it's kind of, or a, a third person, so it's like a shooting game, uh, mixed with a dungeon uh, crawler game. So kind of an interesting mix. Uh, very fun to play, and of course you're getting a second installment. Up next, uh, for the uh, Xbox 360 and the PC, we're getting a game called Rune Legend. It is basically a puzzle game using runes. Wow. How does that work? It's kind of like a inverted Tetris where you just kind of bring the pieces up and you're trying to like finish the puzzle with the pieces you have and make the full picture. I mean, it's a real basic, you know, generic game, but... If you're into puzzling games, it's, you know, whatever. I'm not going to judge you. 
And up finally for the I'll PS judge. for PS3, we have a four-in-one action pack. What is four-in-one action pack? Well, it's four uh, mini games, uh, independent games, brought together in one collection. The games included are Mushroom Wars. Oh, that's which, a good game. Yeah, uh, we have that on the PlayStation. It's a nice little strategy game. Uh, then there's a game called Smash Cars, which is like a destruction derby type game. And we have a game called Digger, which is kind of like a uh, Terraria type game, but not RPG element, more of an action element. Huh. And then there's a, ga a game called Wakeboarding HD, which is just, you you got it, wakeboarding. So, a good little mix of uh, four pack games. Uh, Mushroom Wars looks like a lot of fun. It is, it is a really fun strategy. And game. Digger looks like it may be fun. I really don't care about Smash Cars, but if you have kids, maybe this will, you know, a game for everybody in the family. What do you want? And that's pretty much it. That's all the games they have this week. Uh, it's not exciting, not too much going on. It's like the end of this month leading into the next. It's hot outside and the rent's too damn high. Wow. There you go. Uh, we'll close that down. Don't even, don't even ask about it. Boom. Go okay, on. Well, I've got a different question to ask you. Okay. Do we have a retro game to review this week? Oh, yeah. What, which game are we talking about? Uh, the retro game, <laughs> Mario and Duck Hunt. Because nobody's ever talked about Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt before, right? I mean, obviously we didn't set that up, so... It's a... It's an... kind of forgot, actually. It was just kind of one of those, like, oversights. Where it's just like, oh, yeah... We were going to do that, weren't we? No one suggested a game, and we didn't pick one. So I, I, There was a guy who suggested like four games, like two weeks ago, and we haven't picked any of them. Yeah, he didn't, I didn't hear that. You just didn't like those games. That didn't happen. You don't want to play Jaws. That didn't happen. Well, I mean, what do you want to do? You just want to... I tell you what, you look through those, we'll start the uh, fan corner, do some fan corner questions. Go ahead. All right. First up, Darth J23 says, "Hey, Killing Dirt. So my question for this week is, what do you guys think is the best console for getting back into retro games? I just picked up a PlayStation One at a garage sale. Really enjoying playing some of the older games. Also, Rambo Three was a great game back in the day. Thanks for the show. Uh, I got to tell you what, from my opinion, the best retro platform of all time, Super Nintendo. And this <laughs> is why. All I mean, here's the problem with Super Nintendo games. Let me tell you why first, and I'll tell you the problem." <laughs> uh, the games that you get on the Super Nintendo were there was, they were fun. They were uh, immersive. They were long. They took a while to play. Uh, they were very nice. It was, it was leaps and bounds over the regular Nintendo. And uh, if you plug them in today in your system and play them on your TV, they don't look that bad. They don't look super dated like the you know original Nintendo or the Sega Genesis games look. They actually look mm -hmm. like this could have came out not that long ago. Um, so that that's the good thing about that and there's so many titles on there and there's a good mix of strategy games which there wasn't too many on the original Nintendo and a, a lot of RP tons of RPGs um, and lots of great action platformers and then of course for you people like sports there's those but just updated more modern now, the problem is the Super Nintendo games are some of the most collectible games there are for vintage games so generally speaking most N Super Nintendo games are kind of expensive if you want to get the original ones, I mean, the most average price with anything with the Mario or whatever title, and it's about twenty bucks. Uh, if you get into the RPGs, you can go, you can break a hundred dollars, you know, on those, some of those titles. So, you know, all the great games are expensive. If you can get some emulators, great for you. If you go on to the Wii store and stuff like that, you can download a lot of those RPGs uh, right off their store and play them onto your Wii or you know whatever system. But if you want the originals, they're going to be a little costly. But I got to tell you. Some of the best games, and the games I still love playing to this day, are on the Super Nintendo. See, and I would go with the original Nintendo, the NES. Uh, one, you had a great collection of arcade translations, as well as original games made for the platform. Uh, you had some of the most unique and original games, like Goonies on the NES. is one of the best games ever. Almost nothing to do with the movie, really, uh, except it had that theme song playing in the background. Good enough. For you, Goonies, really? Goonies. I don't even remember playing that game. And they had Goonies 2, and that one was also awesome. But uh, the other main reason why I love games for that platform is because they're cheap. Uh, if you find one that's uh, you know a pretty good collectible, you might pay $14. Uh, but the average game, you're going to pay 4 5 $6 for. Mm -hmm. uh, you can walk into a lot of like pawn shops, and they'll have a set of games that they bought off somebody. They didn't know what they were. They gave the guy like a quarter for them. The guy never came in to pick them back up. So you can buy them for like a dollar. 
you know. Um, garage sales are great for finding these. And, you know, cartridge-based games, it's hard to make them go bad. About the only thing that really can go bad is if the battery goes out, and most of those are replaceable. Um, so I would, you know, I generally think of the NES as being the key retro console because the library was so much bigger um, than, you know, really, I think the PlayStation 2 is the only thing that really kind of well, the, comes up. I in, think in the original of, Nintendo had about 850 plus titles, and I think the Super Nintendo had about 640, somewhere in there. Yeah. So, um, but, but, I mean, the price is the big thing. It just, it's so cheap. I just like um, the, I mean, the, the updated graphics from Nintendo to Super Nintendo made such a big difference to me. And see, for me, I think of Super Nintendo games as being like an NES game with a new coat of paint. So I prefer the original instead of paying just the one that's prettier. Meh. So. Meh. So there you go. Could be uh, NES, could be SNES. It's up to you. Do you like the NES or the SNES? I'm a SNES kind of guy. I know you are. That's what she said. <laughs> All right, Big Dave XXL says, Hey guys, I'm a big fan of the rhythm game genre, mostly rock band. I'm even one of the few people sad to see its decline. Do you see any hope for a rebirth in the next generation of consoles? No. They would have to do something totally different. Like, something totally new. Mm, I, I think... Yeah, I think it could work. One of the big problems with the games has been the peripherals. Throwing up the price. Nowadays, every modern system has some sort of you know, motion controller, hand controller, wave your arms, connect, move, you know, whatever. So, I mean, with those things, you can basically play those games without buying these outrageous, you know, guitars and drum sets and everything. So I think that's possible. Um, but I think the biggest problem is just that there's so many different musical tastes. Um, once they hit those big, like, classic rock songs and put those in all the games, it was just like... Uh, people who want to play along with Katy Perry are not the people that want to play along with Aerosmith, and it's kind of hard to match those two genres together. You know, I think the next the next step, of course, is to actually teach you to play the instruments legitimately. So, well, I think the next step would be to have one of those games that can use your music. When someone finds a way to make a game engine that can accurately take your MP3s, well. I mean, they they did kind of because well, kind of, piece, but it wasn't the PC the great... version of, of of Guitar Heroes on like third and fourth one. They they actually had uh, third party companies that had software where you could take your music and translate it to game notes, and then you could play it. So it's possible. I just don't see it happening. Um, next up, Doubler Two Thousand says, "So cool! I won last week. You guys are the balls." Not sure what that means exactly, um, but whatever. So my question for you guys this week is, what's your favorite movie-based video games on current and retro platforms? Honestly, I can't think of many. And a couple retro gaming suggestions. Okay. NES Boy and His Blob and Let's Super Simple Balloon Fight. Hmm. Even if you don't review them, have you played these games? Have you played Boy and His Blob or yep. Balloon Fight? Balloon Fight? I can't remember. I think I did. Uh, yeah, that's an NES game? Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, I've played that one. A uh, boy in his blob. I don't. I remember recall. playing that. That was that was pretty decent. I remember right the though. name, but I don't remember ever playing it. Like I think they had ads for it in comic books. So uh, we, we'll look into maybe uh, one. My of favorite those. game, uh, TV wise, Twenty Four. No, PS Two. Um, no movie, movie based. Whatever, dude. Movie. It? Tron. Whatever. Hello, Tron. Tr Tron. T Tr Tron. Get over Tron. Why is the big obsession? Tron, Tron saved my life. If it wasn't for Tron, I'd be dead right now. Well, I'm going to go with 24 still. And let me tell you something. They did it was a TV show, but they did have a made for TV, TV movie. movie. So, um, movie. Bam. Uh, if you wasn't he like game, in Africa in that one? Yeah, it was yeah. terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> it was totally out of place. Um, the PS2 version, I mean, I guess it's the only version of the 24 game was great. Played just like you were watching the show and it actually bridged the gap between seasons 3 and 4, I think. So, do, do, if you want to go do, back there and play a PS2 do, game that's kind of fun, do, do, if you like 24, do, do, try 24 the game. Do, do, awesome. Do, do, Super do, hard at some parts, but awesome. When do you think 24 actually jumped the shark? Like, when did they hit that point where it's like, okay, now it's time to hang it up? Uh... Probably with uh, Keith Sutherland doing some crazy stuff, getting out of control. See, for me, it was... remember he went to jail for like, well, yeah, a yeah. month or something? But I think it was season six where he's fighting the terrorists. Like, the bomb goes off in downtown Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. He's fighting the terrorists, and after like four episodes, he finds him and kills him. 
and then the rest of the season is him trying to get his girlfriend back from the Chinese. It's like, I don't care about his girlfriend. His girlfriend's, yeah, he should let her die. I lo- Dude, I don't care. I love that show so much. I would watch, I would watch him sitting at his desk every day trying to figure out what he's going to do for today. Tuna salad. 24. Or, desk patrol. Or do I want a turkey sandwich for lunch? You know, that's great. Jack, you got those reports yet? Still filling them out. Triplicate, right? Right. Gotcha. Do do. Do do. Do do. Do do. No! Power's going out. I didn't hit save. And then, of course, he's got to call Chloe to get patched into somewhere. So, whatever. Chloe, I can't get the spreadsheet to work. I need it now. Now! Okay, Jack. Yeah, with her hate face. <laughs> All right, Mega Big John 28 says, Greetings, Dirt and Lord Killen. I've been a huge Fallout fan ever since I played it on the computer years and years ago. I even have a beta copy of Fallout Van Buren, which was technically wow. supposed to be Fallout 3. Due to the recent news of the cancellation of the Fallout MMORPG, I'd like to know how you feel about this if you are fans of the series. Um, to be honest with you, I never played Fallout 3. I own a copy of it. I bought it actually about the same time I bought Assassin's Creed, I think. Um, And it's one of those things that's sitting there waiting for me someday. I've got that. I've got Heavy Rain. I've got... uh, I don't even know what else. I think I have Cold Fear for the original Xbox. I've never played. Sitting there. Might still be shrink-wrapped. I'm not sure. Um, But yeah, Fallout 3 is sitting there one of those things to play. Now, Fallout 1 and 2 are actually games that I played a lot of. I can remember back in the, oh man, was it 94, I think, when I finally got my first CD drive for my computer. Like, that was big. Like, I paid 120 bucks for my first CD-ROM drive Hey, uh, to get that installed. I, just speaking of computer, like, ridiculous computer prices, I remember one time I wanted to play a game called uh, Terraria, no, uh, Terrace, Terrace. It was a text-based RPG game that was got popular on AOL and then went to its own medium but uh, our computer died and the hard drive went out and I actually went and spent $260 at uh, Best Buy to buy a 10 gig hard drive so I could go home and fix my computer and so I could play that game because I was so addicted to it. Wow. $240 for a 10 gig hard drive. See, I remember buying my first 100 meg hard drive. Wow. How big of a deal that was. 100 megs was a big deal. Did you see the ghost just go right through there? <laughs> I'm not even going to acknowledge it. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, so Fallout 1, Fallout 2. Uh, loved those. Uh, several years ago when I got my first laptop, uh, which was really such an old laptop. I think it was running Windows 95, and this was like in 2001 when I owned this laptop. But I was like, I finally own my own laptop! Um, I bought an external CD drive that I could plug into it just so I could play Fallout and Fallout 2 again, because they were made for that computer system. Um, so I love those games. So, yeah. And now Wasteland. I have hope. I hope you got on the Kickstarter uh, deal for Wasteland 2. That's going to be coming out because that looks to be pretty awesome. Do you also. remember your very first computer game that you played? That I played? That you played? Or that I played intently? That you Well, you just played, that you can remember. The first, well, uh, probably Context Clues on the Apple IIe. Wow. Yeah. I remember, Let's see if I can find any information it, on that. The game that I remember playing, and I'm not going to count school because you played a bunch of dumb games like Kid Picks and all that stuff you know, growing up, but the very first game I remember playing on my own system would be Wolfenstein. Mm. Very first game. And then uh, on our newest computer after that, that my parents paid $2,400 for, I remember, uh, for this crappy Pentium 2, uh, no, Pentium 1, 266 megahertz with, you know, expanded 4 megs of memory, uh, we played uh, Doom 2. And I remember I played the crap out of that game. And my very first online game that I played against somebody else, uh, Warcraft 2. And I played it against one of my friends using our dial-up modem. Um, Context Clues is from 1983. That's the first game I can remember playing. My mom was a school teacher and she would bring home the Apple II computer from school. We'd set it up, we'd have it for the whole weekend. I know, it was pretty amazing. Uh, let's see... 1983? I was three years old. I didn't care about nothing. Um, 
And then also, I remember, hopefully, maybe someone knows what the heck I'm talking about. I've been for years trying to figure out what the heck this thing was. But in the old Apple II days, there was some sort of like electronic school magazine that would come on a floppy disk. And every month there was one of those like graphic with text based adventures where it would be like you're in a castle. And the picture would be in, you know, 8 bit color, you know, big shapes of. Uh, like the big uh, banquet room and there'd be text on the bottom of where you're supposed to go and it'd be kind of like Zork where you're typing turn left, go forward, grab torch, you know, whatever. But I remember there was like a new one every month and there were also, I'm sure, you know, math games and, you know, Math Man and uh, uh, Oregon Trail and stuff like that on there. But I remember these graphic plus text uh, adventure games that you would play on there. And, I, you know, I asked my mom, like, what were those things you used to bring home? She has no idea. Didn't make a, any sort of difference on her. She was just like, here's something. Teach your kids to read. Keep them out of my hair. You know, type of deal. So I bet that company didn't post $22 million losses on our quarter. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But context clues from 1983. My first online game would have had to have been whatever RPG was on the local BBS back in like 93. But... As to what that was, I couldn't tell you. It was one of those where, like, the O represents you, and the dots were the empty squares, and there were, like, plus signs and lines around, and you're just moving. You'd, like, press the thing to move, and then you'd have to wait for the whole screen to refresh, you know, draw the lines. Like BBC. B BBS. BBS. Bolton Board System. I watched a documentary about the BBS on the BBC. Uh, that was actually pretty cool. Hmm. Anyway. All right, finally, last question. From the fan corner, Nasty Will says, Hey, peeps, you think Nintendo know what they was doing when they made the 3D XL a year after the old one so they can get more money? Uh, I feel that the new one should have been the first one made. Do you think they uh, knew what they were doing when they made it a year after the old one? So I'm, I'm not sure what you're asking. Like, Are you asking, did they know they were going to make the XL? They made the small one first, introduce it, and then knew that it would only be out for like a year and then they were coming out with the XL? Well, they, well that or, makes sense because if they, I mean, because technically they should have been able to make both of them at the same time, but give everybody the new one and they're like, oh, awesome, and then let that one uh, die out and they'd be like, but now we got the super one and everybody's like, damn it, now I gotta buy that one. I kind of think... That's gotta be a marketing ploy. I mean, they, they did the, the DS and the DS XL, so they knew that eventually they were going to do this big screen one. But I kind of think... They had to hold it off for a while. Well, I, I kind of think they were going to wait longer. But because of the price drop and everything, they thought we need some way to get our profit margin back up. So what it costs to make the 3D XL is probably a lot lower than where they're selling it at. But because they had to drop the price of the original one so small, they were like, well, here, now we can put out this one with an inflated uh, profit margin on it to try to recoup some of the losses that they made when they cut the original 3DS. So I kind of think they, they, they were going to do it, but like maybe two years, three years down the line, and they decided to push it out sooner in order to try to get that profit margin back up. Because it's something that they can charge more for because it's a premium device, it's got the bigger screens on it. Um, I like the idea of it. I mean, I look at it, it looks nice, although it, it looks almost a little too big. Like it, That's what she said. It's kind of... It's kind of starting to hit that point where it's not as much of a fun portable system that you can just drag around with you once it gets to that XL size. Then it becomes more like a mini tablet, you know. And then it's no longer something in your pocket, it's something in your backpack, you know, and that makes a I think I prefer playing on an XL just because... Screen's bigger? Screen's bigger, and for whatever reason, that, like, makes or breaks it for me. Why can't they do a laptop size one? That would be ridiculous. I, w I want a 17-inch <laughs> screen 3DS. Why not? If that was full 3D... You know how kick-ass it would be to have a laptop with a full 3D screen, like the screen on the DS? I'm pretty sure they have those. I'd love to have one. You know what I'm I could sure watch on that? I could watch Tron Legacy in 3D. Tron! Tron! Represent, yo! How many times, do you, how many times do you think you watched Tron Legacy? Legacy? Yeah. Uh, Legacy only like 30. Like maybe 25, 30, somewhere in there. But original Tron? Original Tron, phew, thousand. Easy. Easy. Yesterday. I taped it off Channel 55, our local Fox affiliate, back when it was an independent station. They played it like a Sunday afternoon. I recorded it off TV. And I watched that so many times that when it actually came out on VHS in the early 90s, I bought the VHS tape, I put it in, and when it didn't cut to commercial, I was like, whoa, wait, this is wrong. Like, why is it still continuing? Where's Patterson's quick cleaning service? Oh, right. 
This isn't the TV version with commercials. That's how many that times. Much. Oh, yeah. A lot. Quite a it bit. It wasn't even that amazing. It was fantastic. It was the best movie ever made in the history of movies. Hmm. Citizen Kane got nothing on Tron, and you can quote me. All right. <clears throat> Pick one of these questions. Um, 3D XL. Fallout. Um, rhythm games. Um, or retro console. Let me just say something about rhythm games since you said that. Uh, Proper the Rapper, best rhythm game ever. Word. Nah, not best. Best. Top three. What's top? What's your number one? Frequency. And second one, Amplitude. What? Yeah. Oh, no, no. Yes. No. Yes. Those games are garbage. No, those are better than any of the other Rock Band or any of those crap games. Whatever. All right, so pick uh, one. You want to pick that one? Uh, Have you already forgotten the choices? Just, whatever, man. Yeah, the, the one rhythm. Rhythm games? All right, that's Big Dave Double XL. Big, big yeah. Dave Double XL for being the uh, fan corner question of the week. You get this Halo ODST Arctic Sniper Specialist Mega Block set. So I'll be sending you a PM message on the uh, message boards and. Uh, I'll be asking for your name and address. We'll mail this out to you forthwith. And don't forget, if you want to win a nifty little toy, come to jointheforums.com, the official forums of the Pop Culture Network. Come down to the Video Game Losers Fan Corner thread. Post your question. We will answer it. And if Killen likes you, and maybe you bought him off with some Legos, we'll send you some sort of neat game swag. Or swag. Maybe game swag, maybe game swag. You never know what you're going to get, but you'll get something here on the Video Game Loser Show. And we should send the empty box to everybody else we didn't pick. <laughs> it just says, you open up, big note, you lost. <laughs> <laughs> How much shipping would that cost? I don't know, it'd almost be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, don't forget, if you want to leave us a voicemail, you can call area code 217-953-4025. If you want to send an email, you can send it to killing at popculturenetwork.com, dirt at popculturenetwork.com. You can always come to popculturenetwork.com, find the other great stuff. You can find more episodes of this show at videogamelosers.com. Don't forget, jointheforums.com, the official message board, Pop Culture Network. Go to shoppcn.com where you can buy a copy of Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt for the NES, which, because we all know that the NES is the greatest uh, retro console of all time, the best for retro gaming. I'm telling you, Super Nintendo is much NES. better. NES. Much better. NES. I'm done talking to you. All right, good night. I'm out of here. Hey guys, thank you for watching our videos on the Pop Culture Network. We do hope that you will help support us by visiting shoppcn.com, where you'll find all these amazing toys, comic books, DVDs, video games, random geek goodness, all brought to you at an incredibly great price. Every dollar you spend helps contribute to the Pop Culture Network. <laughs>